Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. More content for The Walking Dead Retribution. Three new trailers, one new article, and a lot of information to break down. This might be a long video, so strap in and we're going to get started. So we're going to be taking a look at each of the three videos that have been provided to us, and I will be linking all of them in the description below, and I'm going to be breaking down each and every one of them and what all they might have. The first one we're going to be looking at is by Upload VR, and here it is. Already we can see that the title screen looks absolutely amazing. It looks to be in the French Quarter with the tower very close by. Walkers are seen in the title screen, and there's a play demo button, which might indicate, and this is a maybe, that a demo will be shipped out on either Steam or Oculus, who knows. One thing as well is that there's a play tutorial button, which is very nice considering we won't have to play through the entire tutorial in order to start a new game. Also, do keep in mind that all of the footage you're seeing is about three months old, as you can see by the timestamp right here. So this is still pre-alpha footage, a lot of things are subject to change, but you already know that. The first clip you can see here is at Sonny's Pawn Shop, which has been hinted at throughout Aftershocks, and there are notes of it in the files as well. This looks to be very early on in the game, at least from a gameplay standpoint, because you can see there are a bunch of in-game hints as well as how to mantle, which you should already know how to do. It also appears that there's a new radio station, channel 65, which is where you reach out to Sonny, and he tells you where he is in Bywater, and then you go out to meet him, which is the pawn uh, task. One thing as well you may not have noticed is that the journal is very different. The map icon was moved to the left side, and there's now room for three more tabs on the right side. This could be the faction menu, this could be a skill set menu, I'll talk more on that later, or it could be a number of things we don't know. There also seem to be waypoints throughout these videos, but I'm going to assume that's just a demo thing so that the players don't wander off and, you know, do something random. We got ourselves a problem, Tours, with the Padre. Problems are my specialty, Sonny. What's going on? I knew I could count on you, Tours. I haven't heard from Father Carter in over a week. We can also finally hear Sonny's voice, which is very nice to hear, as well as hearing the Taurus voice. It is the same voice actor, which I am very pleased to hear. And our theories about Sonny being a quest giver was also confirmed. He does give us tasks to go out and do, the first one being in the French Quarter. And Night Mode. This looks incredible. I don't have to tell you twice, but just about everything here looks amazing. We've got the flares, you know, it's hard to see. Also, walkers are now going to be attracted to your light beam, so you won't be able to just shine it all willy-nilly. They will actually see it, which is another reason why flares are going to be more useful so that you can distract more walkers. And here's another interesting part. You can see the clipboard map is the exact same. It has all eight locations still, including the resting area, but now there's the French Quarter map. And here is the French Quarter. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be disappointed that it's only one new location. However, this location, the French Quarter, is massive. I mean, it might take up five or six maps, depending on how correct our theories are. Every screenshot that you're seeing on screen from the original Steam teasers is the French Quarter. The recording studio, the bathrooms, the hotel, the outdoors area, all of this is going to be in one single map and potentially the sewers as well. We don't know this for sure, but uh, I can't see why there would be another map for the sewers. And do keep in mind that already existing maps will be opened up more possibly, they will be expanded on, some areas may be closed off, and a lot more interesting stuff will be happening. Here's another interesting thing. When the Tower Soldier says, I think I can hear something, you can see on screen that that actually had subtitles, which, if you watched my Day 1 version, it actually had subtitles for the miscellaneous comments that soldiers would make. This turned out to not be the case in later versions of the game, but that's nice to see that that's making a return. 
We can also see a hint at the attachments, which if you pause for a second, you can see the item description of the laser sight, and it seems to be just as easy as throwing it on your gun and clicking it. This is pretty interesting because not only are we going to have laser sights, we're also going to have suppressors, and in the files for Saints and Sinners, there is a texture for a holotech sight. Now, I don't know if this will make a return. Maybe not. Maybe. Who knows? But uh, it is still very interesting to see. And yes, you can put this laser sight on a bow because it wasn't easy enough already with the aim assist. Here we can see one of the first interactable characters, which is the father. He seems to be either pretty drunk or clinically insane, but he does also seem to give us a task. He may end up being a returning character, who knows, he may be related to Sonny. After all, Sonny does send you out to get him, at least in the task, so who knows. We also see more quest items, like the speakeasy coin. We've got more codes, we've got more items, we've got more everything. A new Uzi, or submachine gun, whatever it is, it looks very cool. And here we have just Walker Mayhem. We already saw this area in the first trailer, which it looks like it's going to be as insane as we thought it was. There's a lot of walkers, there's a lot of areas they can jump down from and sneak attack you, and there's just a lot of them in general. And everyone's favorite, I'm pretty sure, is the chainsaw. It looks to be fuel-powered, considering it is emitting gas, and it takes up a slot in your long-arm weapon, so you can just pull it out from over your shoulder if you want. And the new gore mechanics look incredible. You can saw walkers in half with ease. Though it doesn't look to be that effective in combat, if I'm being quite honest, because this player has no grapple on or something like that. But it also looks like there won't be crawlers, unfortunately, uh, due to the fact that the ones that are sawed in half aren't getting back up, so that sucks, but it is what it is. Another thing that you'll notice in this mission is that there are shootable boxes around the area, which is really interesting that they're, in, they're revamping their creativity with their missions. And if we're going to have shootable boxes, who knows what else we're going to be able to do in the French Quarter alone, let alone other maps as well. They're definitely going to be going all out on this game, and I really like that. And here is everyone's probably favorite part of the trailer, the Axeman reveal. We can see an innocent, probably not innocent, let's be honest, a person running past, and then the Axeman. Takes a look at the person, and then us. Now one thing I'm very happy about is that they made him actually menacing. They made him a lot bigger in this version, which is really nice. In the other trailer, he didn't look that menacing, to be quite honest, but that was probably the lighting, that was probably just the positioning, but uh, it looks a lot better now. Now here's another interesting thing. If you pause the video for just a second, you can see in this guy's inventory, he has what is called a sap glove. Now you can tell by looking at these gloves that they're used by military members, making me believe that you can find them off of dead tower soldiers. Now, I don't think they would have a glove item in the game if you couldn't wear it. So that does make me believe that we will have more player customization beyond just your skin tone and voice. As it turns out, I was right. The gloves are wearable. Also, keep in mind that as I'm editing this, more videos are coming out literally by the minute. So I'm definitely going to miss a couple things, but that's for you to adventure on for yourself. Hopefully this also translates to sleeves and other armor bits as well. He also mentions that we're going to have new work benches, plural by the way, to add to the three that we already have. And this also is interesting because they have yet to show any gameplay at the bus area, which makes me believe we're likely not going to have it as a main hub area, considering, you know, it gets blown up in the trailer. But that does make me wonder where exactly we're going to have these different bases. It could be one in every location, or it could be in Sonny's pawn shop, which is what everyone else is probably thinking. Here you can also see at day 70, tower presence has been increased. And I really like that they're trying to put an emphasis on how many tower soldiers they're going to be, because they're actually going to be a threat now just as much as the walkers. And here's another really interesting part. When the guy tries to activate the machine, it instead activates music, giving you a little challenge to do before being able to move on to the next part of the mission, which I really like because all of the missions in Saints and Sinners were just go here, grab this thing, come back. So it's really nice that we're going to have a lot more advanced missions and a lot more different routes we're going to be able to take. 
We can see here in the Game Tyrant article that it says we have been given some new toys to play with along with a variety of new permanent skills. What could this mean? We don't know. We theorize right now that there will be a skill system, possibly something in the journal. And here's another interesting thing, new zombie variations, which is what a lot of people asked for in the last game. Now, variations could mean a number of different things. They're also putting a lot of emphasis on the falling zombies, which means they're probably just going to be spawned in as you're walking and they're just going to fall from the rooftops, which is going to be interesting. I do like that. And as of right now, that's pretty much it. I'm going to continuously update the description and the comment section with new and improved resources and videos as the time goes on because it's only like 12 p.m. for me right now. So more stuff is going to be coming out. Gamescom is live streaming right now, so if you're quick enough, you can catch the live stream and hopefully some retribution stuff will be shown there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. That is all. Goodbye.